we thank you today lord for another time to receive your word and be impacted by it lord impact us with the wisdom of your word today as you lead us the right way to go in jesus name wisdom the bible says is the principal thing the wisdom of god that is nothing should be exalted above it is the principle just like in a business when you say something is the principle or in economics or in finance that's the main thing every other thing are just additions or subtractions interest but without the principle there is nothing you get the picture and no wonder the lord jesus christ himself is called the wisdom of god amen And the Bible says, with all thy getting, get understanding. Understand how things work. Understand how things go. Understand what God wants. Understand what God demands. Understand how we go with God. Amen? With all thy getting, get understanding. Daniel 12 verse 3. As we refresh ourselves again. It says, And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars of heaven, sorry, as the stars, I'm the one who added ever, forever and ever. And this tells me one of the main ingredients found is wisdom is the ability to turn to righteousness those who are outside by the way we live. Do you get me? That means our lives our language, and I don't mean I don't mean Amaria or Tigria. That's not what I mean. Huh? Our language, you you understand what I mean? Our demeanor, our oppression. When we do that in the wisdom of God, are you following me? You remember when Paul was defending himself, if I put it that way, or explaining himself? I think there was one of those Roman kings, Agrippa, or so. Who said you almost make me a Christian? <laughs> you remember? What's his name? You get my point? Because everything about him shows this is not ordinary. It's language. Everything. The ability to turn right to righteousness. Those with whom we work. Those with whom we live. Those we deal with. And you know the irony of it, most of us as Christians, many of us are even the reasons why people don't want to be Christians. Can you see the other side? Are you following me? Why do they so that they see the way the person lives, the way the person talks? Are you getting my point? They say, no, if this is Christianity, I don't want. Have you heard that before? I'm sure. It's not because of him. The, his wisdom, if I put it that way. You get my point? The way he speaks, the way he talks, he likes like them, he cheats like them. He, you, you get my point? They say, uh-uh. If his own is Christianity, I don't want. So it also tells me that there is a way you conduct yourself. Amen? Talk, deal with, relate with, that you can turn. That's why Apostle Paul is speaking in Colossians chapter 4. You didn't read the one you should read, or you are enjoying what I'm saying. Okay. Okay, let's go to Colossians chapter 4. Colossians chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. Glory to God. You have to pay for that. It's scream for hire. Glory to God. Colossians chapter 4, verse 5 and 6. Paul says, Walk in wisdom. Did you see the word work? Are you following me? Walk in wisdom does not mean physical, it means live in it. 
talk in it. Are you following me? Demonstrate it. Walk in wisdom towards them that are where? Who are the people without? Excuse me? Who are the people without? I didn't hear you. Read. Five and six. The man who is a the man who is a young 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 man who is Wisdom must be demonstrated in what we say. Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how you ought to answer every man. Many people, their speech put them into trouble. Their answers finish them. You get my point? And that's why we need to desire wisdom. Amen. That's why we seek his wisdom. In speech, in composure, in demeanor, in attitude, in relationship, wisdom. To be wise in the way that we act with people. I was sharing some of my evangelistic experiences with um, Apostle Arega just before the service. In this place, it's not like back home, you can really go on the streets, meet people, preach like that, you know. And I've discovered some things, when I meet with ladies and I'm trying to get them, you get my point. Whether at work or somewhere, you can't really communicate, you are trying to open channels of communication. And then you say, okay, no problem, let's, let's have the lunch. Instantly, their mind goes to, I want to have a relationship with them. I've, I've experienced it four, five, six times. That's not my intention. That means I need wisdom to know how to communicate with these people. To get. I'm just using that as open example. You, you get my point? I, I was, even my daughter has been part of it. I've, we have been discussing. Uh, wh wh why should that be the first thing that comes to their mind? <laughs> but that's their world. You understand me? That's their world. To the pure, all things are pure. To the defied, it is defied. That's their world. But you see, the Bible says we have to work with wisdom towards them. So we need the wisdom to get them. I, I, I'm just giving us, maybe some of you have that reference where you work. Amen? I told, I told him to, I think I, I referred to you too. We, we, during Thanksgiving about three or four years ago, we took a lady to a house for Thanksgiving. And, um, but one of our members was becoming tribal. She's a Nigerian. And was condemning our tribe's attitude. You know that already takes her off. For example, we want to win him and we come to your house. Right? We invite him. Let's have lunch. And as we are having the lunch, what tribe are you? Which guy is south? What is south? What is not? No, no, no. Just give me the larger one. I'm, okay, forget your tribe. Let me say, let's say he's Oromo. I know you, right? And then we are talking. We want him to come to our church and you begin to condemn Oromo. Will he follow us? That's what happened to that lady. And it took me time to get her to that point. The next time we called her, she didn't answer us. So one day, okay, I said, I know how to get you. Let's have lunch. Oh, pastor, no problem, because people like food. <laughs> then the following day, she called me back. She said, pastor, I can't go. You are married. I said, what? I'm not calling you for lunch because... So that is their world. I'm giving you that picture. I was telling him of another lady. I, 
press, I call, I will text to come. Okay, I will come, I will come. I said, look, I'm not going to call you again. I've been calling you too much. The next thing she tells me, she said, oh, you had the man. The man pursues a woman by calling many times. That's not what I'm calling you for. And she knows. But in her mind, it's different. Because that is what? Their world. We now need what? The wisdom. Do you get my point now? Are you getting the picture? The same thing. You may have it in various experiences. We now need the wisdom that our speech will connect. Let your speech be filled with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how to answer everyone. And it's the same in every area. So, it's important how we conduct ourselves and what we say. When we do that in wisdom, we'll be able to turn souls. You know what Jesus said? Matthew 10, 16. Behold, I sent you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. What's wolf in America? Huh? Okay, wolves like dog. Those are. He said, therefore, be what? Wise as a serpent and gentle as a dove. Even among the people we live in, we need that wisdom of God. Are you following me? Not to be hot, not to be destroyed. That's what happens to us. Be wise, and you know this happened. The way it moves. So that's how God expects you that you can maneuver in any situation with His wisdom. And as gentle as those. I pray that God truly gives us the wisdom. Wisdom has also in it what is called sound judgment. And we have to develop ourselves in it. The Bible says the wise will shine as the brightness of the firmament will shine. Keep asking God for this wisdom. Again, what is wisdom? I like putting in every message some various definitions of wisdom watch this definition wisdom is simply the ability to make the right decisions in harmony with the right laws you don't operate wisdom outside of the laws of the kingdom you get my point in harmony for example look at what Jesus said when they asked him to pay tax you remember Whose coin? Whose inscription is this? He says, okay, give unto God what is God. Give unto Caesar what is Caesar's. Wisdom delivered him. <laughs> if it's some of us these days, we want to show we are men of faith. Right? We'll go and say grammar. They carry him to Roman prison. He will go and be preaching inside prison there. But wisdom, are you following me? Not the right laws. Don't misunderstand me. We need to put that there. Wisdom is simply the ability to make right decisions in harmony with right laws at the right time to produce a righteous result. Not just any kind of result. A righteous result. That's a simple definition. The ability to make right decisions in harmony with right laws at the right time to produce righteous results. But understand this, true wisdom cannot operate where there is the spirit of arrogance and pride. I know it. Who are they talking to? Uh, <laughs> true wisdom. You won't find wisdom there. Because wisdom is actually given to those who don't know, but who want to know. Amen? So, and I'm going to take us through some steps on that. We need to understand that arrogance is an opposite of proper wisdom. Jesus spoke in John 7, 17, I believe. If you be willing to know. No. If you be willing to. Give me John 7, 17. If you're willing to do that, you shall know of this doctrine that I speak the truth. There must be a willingness for you to know. For God to make you know. 
Hosea 6 verse 3. Then shall you know if you follow on to know the Lord. For his going forth is prepared as the morning. And it will come to us as the first and the latter rain in the same month. If you are what? Willing to know. Ready to know. Don't worry, I've read it. I've already gone beyond that. I'm, I'm correct, I know. If you are willing and ready and humble. Because only God gives wisdom. And in wisdom, like I said, there is what is called sound or good judgment. We need to start displaying good judgment. The ability to judge. I don't mean judgment in terms of condemnation of judgment. The ability to judge righteous judgment. And what is judgment? Because every time, most times when people hear the word judgment, they think it's condemnation. No, no, don't think it that way. Do you understand me? What is judgment? Judgment is the capacity to assess a situation and draw a sound conclusion. Assess a situation and draw a sound conclusion. You understand me? That's judgment. It's not... Mm -mm. Assess a situation just like a judge will see it. You present your case. He presents his case. He assesses the situation. You get the point? It's the ability or the capacity to be able to assess a situation and draw sound conclusions. So when you are in any situation with the wisdom of God at work, there are a lot of calculations that has gone out in your mind. You have assessed it. And a word or an imposition or an attitude, are you following me? Or a way out comes to you. <laughs> eh? They brought a woman to him. We caught him in the very we caught her in the very act. Where was the man? And they said, Moses said we should kill him. And the Bible says, This they said to him to what? Trap him. Hmm. Of course, I've had some preachers say he was praying in the Holy Ghost. What do I do now? <laughs> How do I answer these people? They want to condemn me. Do you understand me? And then he stood. Okay. You want to kill her? Fine. I agree. But he that has no sin, let him throw the first stone. All of them from the highest to the least. They found their way back to where they came from. Are, are you following me? We, we look at Solomon. The issue of the two kids. Huh? One dead, one alive. No DNA. No thumbprint. Eh? How do you judge? Even babies, you that gave birth to the baby in two weeks, you can't still recognize the baby if they put three or four of them together. <laughs> How do you judge? <sighs> and wisdom came. And wisdom said, okay, just cut both of them into two. Because wisdom knew that the mother would rather let the child, the true mother would rather let the child go than kill you. You get my point? And you know what the Bible says after that? The whole land became amazed at that judgment. So there is the wisdom at work, at home, on the streets, that you display that even unbelievers who don't like your faith bows to it. That this is not ordinary. Glory to God. And remember, every good and perfect gift comes from God. Like I said on Sunday, it is God that gives wisdom. And that's why James says we need to ask for it. Wisdom is not just acquiring information, but it's practical insight with spiritual applications. That's why we differentiate the wisdom of men, the wisdom of devils, and the wisdom of God. Like I said, every time I'm talking, I'm talking of the wisdom of God. I saw something in my preparation earlier. In 1 Samuel, we notice that the children of Israel asked for a king. But that's not new to God. Because in Deuteronomy, God already said, a time will come, they will ask for a king. And God told them, so when you hear the Bible says, wisdom says by me, kings rule, and princes decree justice, you understand. God told them, when you are going to have a king, look out for this, and let him do this. 
I want us to see those things. Deuteronomy 17, verse 16. I will paraphrase them. He said, your king shall not multiply horses to himself. Verse 17. He shall not multiply wives to himself. And it's so strange, <laughs> if you read Second Chronicles especially, you will see all those kings, including David from First Chronicles. Once they get the kingdom established, the next thing, they marry more wives. <laughs> and, and, and you know, God said they should not, but the wives of Solomon turned them. You, you, you get the picture now. To the point that he has to build shrines for each one of them. We've seen a lot of kings that their evil wives turned them. Ahab, for example. But God says, that's not my focus. Verse 17, Neither shall he multiply wives to himself, that his heart turn not away. It's already written. If he does that, his heart will turn. That's why we say, the book has given us the way to go, but most times, we don't, we don't just take care of it. And then we enter into trouble. You will not enter into trouble. And um, neither shall he greatly multiply himself silver and gold. Now look at what verse 18 says. God told them what they should not do. But it's interesting to see what verse 18 says. Read verse 18. Just for that. He shall be when he sits on the throne of his kingdom that he shall write him a copy of this law in a book. The first thing to do is all that I have told you, write in a book. Watch. Go to verse 19. And he shall be with him and he shall read therein all the days of his life. God told him what not to do. The only thing God told him to do is what? Make sure this book is available, right? And read it all the days of your life. Why? Because, look at it. That he may learn to fear God. What's the fear of God? Are you getting the picture? That he may learn to fear God and to keep the, all the words of this law and these statutes and do them. Write and read. Amen? Your own, they have written it for you. Eh? So read it. Not just go to school alone. This is another school. <laughs> read it. Amen. Read it. And then he now says something in verse 20. If you do, because that, it means, so that if you, if you are versatile in the reading now, let's put it that way, Right? So that his heart be not lifted up above his brothers. What is that? If your heart is lifted up above your brothers, what is that? That's why I say arrogance and pride don't stay with wisdom. That's one thing God don't want you to have. Because God receives the proud. And give grace, which is wisdom, to the humble. Is there. Are you following me? Don't do this. But if you must walk with me, read this book all the days of your life. That you will not be filled with pride. That it turn not aside from my commandment to the right or to the left. To the end that he may prolong his days in his kingdom. He and his children in the middle of Israel. So if we want to walk the way of wisdom, we do what? Write and read. This book. They've written it for us. Thank God for that. Let's read it. You will so be imparted with wisdom and you'll be kept away from pride. You shall write and read. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And that's why the Bible says, We are pride, comet. Then comes shame. But to the lowly is wisdom. Humility of heart. I know it already. What are you talking about? <laughs> you won't know anything. <laughs> oh Lord. <laughs> and then I went a step further. Proverbs 14, verse 6. It's gone as secret wisdom and findeth it not. It's gone. 
thinks he knows better than everybody. I have no respect for anybody. You read that. But knowledge is easy to him that understands. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Read Proverbs 14, 6. Are you following me? Relax yourself. To learn. To receive wisdom. Don't be too forward. Before they say one thing, you have said ten. You know it, man. Men, you are just speaking foolishness. Don't be too forward. Amen? It is better to hear than to speak the language of fools. Let's do this. You already know how to do everything. Everybody is trying to chip in. Mm, go, 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 go. It won't work. And when it comes to the things of God, don't be rushed to judgment. Lord, help me. Amen? Look at Solomon. When we heard from Solomon in 1 Kings chapter 3, I want you to watch the language in verse 7 when he was asking God for wisdom. 1 Kings chapter 3 verse 7. Glory be to the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lord. Hallelujah. Are we there? Everybody watch me. And now, O Lord God, O Lord my God, you have made me what? He sees himself as what? A servant. Not that word. Your servant, king, instead of David, my father. I am but what? Are you getting the picture now? Was he a small boy? I am but a little child. And I don't even know how to go or go, go anywhere and come in. What, do you, what are you seeing there? The humility of heart. That's how we encounter wisdom. Amen? Read it. Barian. Yeah. He saw a job bigger than he can handle. You get the picture? He saw a job bigger than he can handle. Every time you think you can do it, you are looking for trouble. Every time you think you know how to handle it, you are looking for trouble. <laughs> eh? Because that attitude won't let you depend on him. That attitude won't let you to be able to ask for his help. Amen? You've been a cab driver for 15 years. And you think you know everything. Are you following me? But there is still more the Holy Ghost can show you that can make the profit of one year bigger than what you have seen in 15 years. Are you following me? We walk with God with humility of heart to encounter wisdom. When you possess that humility of heart, it becomes very easy for you to ask. The reason you are not asking for it is because you think you know. If you know something, will you ask for it? You get a picture now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Look at verse 9. No, no, no. Verse 8. Let's go to 8 first. And your servant is in the middle of your people which you have chosen. A what? Those figuratively, she was talking of number. But at the same time, I want you to see how he sees the people. That is king over. Are you getting my picture? Number one, they are not his people. He sees them as God's people. A great people that cannot be numbered. Go to verse 9 now. Give me therefore, you keep seeing that word, your servant, your servant, your servant. 
I told Mr. Tai was something. He was to pick up somebody. And after one or two days, he said, Pastor, if that guy says, say, 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 I'm not going to pick him up again, I said, why? He said, the way he talked to me, I laughed first. I said, that's how they've been talking to me. He said, remember? <laughs> I said, your own is only one. <laughs> Amen. I said, that's how they've been to this. No, we, we are God's servant, right? So we take it all. Some people come to church because you are, they think, no, 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 no. You take, that's what they did for Paul. That's why one day Paul said, hey, everybody, listen. I'm not a fool. If you check your Bible, you remember? He said, if you think you're a Pharisee, I am more. If you think, you get my point. But we carry a humble heart and we receive it all. So I told Mr. Tavo, that means you are doing good. <laughs> Amen, and he got it. So that's, that's how we hear. He said, give there for your servant an understanding heart to judge your people that I may discern between good and bad for who is able to do this job. Let me just summarize it that way. That's how we go. Any assignment or job that you are given, approach it with that attitude and you never lack his wisdom. Amen? Even if it's in church, you might be a preacher and be preaching, but don't just jump up because you have been a preacher and you think you just go like something like before. Your heart must always crave for his hand, his way. Whatever you do. Amen? And that's how we grow in him. That's how we grow in wisdom. Jesus is Lord. Wisdom and sound judgment comes as a result of an humble attitude that we present to God that we need him to give us ability. Last Wednesday I talked of some of the ways by which we steer off with the rod, the word of wisdom in us. And I think I talked of three. Who can remind me of those three? Glory to God. Let me see. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Because I'm going to continue. Avenue for activating the gift of divine wisdom. We said number one by the word of God, if you remember. And uh, we talked number two by the Holy Spirit. No, no. Number two, by feeding on the word of wisdom for those who possess it. You read the book, the books. You get my point? Counsel. One of my sons out of state had some problem and called me today. But before he called me, I sensed that problem. I saw some things in the newspaper in the city, and I said to myself, I hope he is not one of them. And two days later, he called me, he was one of them, and they sacked him. A good person, committed person. You, you get my point? And I, it called me to pray. I, I did pray, and I know how to pray that prayer because the, that's, none of us is perfect. God's mercy, that's why God's mercy is there. And I know God will sort him out. But I said, well, I'm going to, and I didn't want to tell him what I saw. Because they don't hit a man when he's down. Get him up first. <laughs> but I felt, well, you didn't call me before you joined them to do that. You could have called, Pastor. This was going on at work and they want us, what, what do you advise me? I would have told him, you are not one of them. Let the people of the world do what? But your life does not even depend on what the company gives you and you are doing fine. So just don't politicize everything you know but of course that happened God always give us a way out so I know he has no problem God will sort him out but you get the picture now you seek counsel the Bible says with great counsel you go to war right in the multitude of counselors there is what safety we seek counsel from people ahead right we learn from the book also that's what we're saying and number three we said of course, the Holy Spirit should not even be numbered. Forget all those numbering, but let's just put them together. 
There's a spirit in man, but the inspiration of the Almighty gives it understanding. But today, I continue from um, number four, which is by prayer and fasting. And of course, we did that on Sunday, right? Uh, Sunday, we talk of, you can get your city. Uh, those of you who are not there. We talk of the, the place of prayer in securing wisdom, you know. These are very important things. But I choose to put it today as prayer first when you have issues. It's time. Proverbs, I mean Ecclesiastes, is it? No, no, that's not. That's Proverbs 18, verse 1. A man through desire, having separated himself, seeketh and intermediates with all wisdom. You set time out in prayer and fasting with a purpose. With a purpose, with a mission. Lord, show me the way to go. You get my point? Prayer and fasting without a purpose of heart. Uh, uh, with a purpose of heart. And James says, if you lack it, ask for it. You remember Daniel and his friends? They went after God for that secret. Then was a secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. There are things God wants to show us. There are things we need to know. So let's seek him for it, in, for his wisdom in prayer and fasting. In another one, I talked about this also on Sunday. Having a passionate love for God and the things of the kingdom of God. Amen? Solomon loved the Lord first. Daniel refused to defile himself with the king's meat first. Amen? Joseph, I fear God. I can't do this first. Are you getting my point? David, how can I be under a, in a palace and the house of God is under a tent? So we demonstrate that love in various ways. And God keeps ensuring that you don't lack his wisdom. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things shall be added unto you. Very important. And I had this one, praise. Have a praiseful heart. Many of us don't have a praiseful heart. We come to church, we sing praise, but we don't have a praiseful heart. That's not a praiseful heart. A praiseful heart that your heart is loaded with joy. Not that you are in church. You are, it's just there. Like I told somebody, I'm not aware you can be around me for five minutes and you will not. All of you must have explained. You will hear me say, oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus is Lord. God is good. It's coming from here. Are you following me? Have a praiseful heart. You are not the president of the world. That means you are not carrying the whole trouble of the world. So what's your problem? <laughs> Enjoy yourself. He said, rejoice evermore. In an atmosphere of joy, God manifests. A merry heart doeth good like mercy. A broken spirit who can bear. Maintain a joyful heart. Praise. Let the people praise you. Some people think we praise him only because things are good. Right? When we see things good. No, that, that has nothing to do with it. Let the people praise you, God. Let all the people praise you. Then the heart shall yield an increase. And God, even our God shall, as in Psalm 7 verse 5, God, even our God shall bless us. God shall bless us and all the hands of the heart shall fear before you. Praise him. Amen? Maintain an attitude of what? Praise. You know, you don't dry off. Joel chapter 1 verse 12. He said, joy with us. Everything with us because joy is withered away from the sons of men. Habakkuk 3 verse 17. Although the victory shall not blossom, the labor of the holy shall fail and all that. He said, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will join in the God of my salvation, verse 18. Then he will make my feet like hind's feet. He will set me up upon my high places. Those, that's why we talk of understanding. Amen. You can be zero today and a million tomorrow. That's nothing with God for those who understand them. Are you following me? 
it i mean it, when you look at circumstances and you look at physical situations to reflect on your position the positions of your heart you don't know him you don't know him you remember paul and silas you remember perhaps with blood dripping and pain and yet they sang what they sang praises that the prisoners had them they were enjoying their life they were not singing praise of sorrow and in the twinkling of an eye everything scattered and the, the chains fell off those who know him don't give up on him for we look not at the things which are seen for the things has, which we are seen are temporal but we look for, at the things which are not seen for the things which are not seen are eternal for for this our light affliction which worketh for us but a far more exceeding eternal weight of glory amen those who know him don't give up on him for we walk not by faith not by sight but by faith and faith always answers. It will answer for you. Amen? Amen? I want us to be men of the word. Of course, men and women. Maybe pastor doesn't like women now. Men and women of the word. He told them, don't do this, but this is one thing I want you to do. Write, read so that you can do what I say. <laughs> write, read. Write, read. All the days of your life. Glory to God. When you are joyful, you will be revelation full. Be joyful. Because your being joyful connects you to divine presence. Be joyful. Amen? Don't sing praise only because you are in church. It's praise time. Be praiseful every time. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to praise thy name, O Most High. To show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night. Amen. Stop looking at what, stop being moved by what you see. Be moved by what he says. Amen. And put your faith on what he says. Because in the twinkling of an eye, it will change. Like this. It doesn't take God a century to change your story, it won't take him that. I always give you this picture. The three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were there condemned in the king's palace. Like I told people, the fiery furnace was not inside where the throne was. It couldn't be, right? You get my point? It must be outside the compound somewhere. So here were they condemned. And the people who were accused them, <laughs> I find. Ah, they were doing high five and these guys were going maybe they walked 20 minutes maybe 30 minutes I don't know I'm just trying for you to see but in those times they were not moved because they were even ready to die for him are you following me but the people who condemned them they thought they are finished right the king has given and those days they don't change the king's verdict and the king has given his verdict and they were going and those ones perhaps they are celebrating and dancing, okay? One minute, two minutes, five minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. <laughs> and then when they threw them into the fire, the people who even threw them into the fire died. And then the story turned. God didn't stop it until they were inside the fire. He could have stopped it if he wanted. But he had no reason to. Because he's God over the fire too. Amen. And when they threw them into the fire, 
and the king came to see. Did we not throw three people inside the fire? They said, yes. He said, but I see four. Who is the fourth one? Uh, and the appearance of the fourth man is like unto the Son of God. <laughs> the only thing that God burned were their chains. They came out from fire. I may teach that another day. Because we go through fire. It was from fire they assessed their glory. And you follow him? Do you understand what I mean? If you are not ready to go into the fire for him, you are not worthy of his glory. They came out from the fire to assess their glory. Don't be moved by what you hear, but by what he says. Are you following me? If you lay hold, that's why he said, write it. They have written it for us, but read it. We are even in a better shape than them. Because most of them have no reference. If you know what I mean. They have no reference of testimonies to hold on to. We have it all. We talk of David. We talk of Paul. We talk of Solomon. Are you following me? They didn't, <laughs> they didn't have much reference. And the book we have today, they didn't have it like that then. Everything was written on the back of one camel something kept somewhere with the priest. Are you following me? No text, no what's up, what happened here today now, everybody is already. Mm -mm. So it's not as if they had this much exposure that we have, so we are better off. We have no excuse. Amen? So if anything you go on with today is write and read. Read this book. Gather wisdom from it. Amen? And keep the fire of God hot in your life. Every day, like I said last Sunday, you are asking yourself, what do I have to do for my God today? Amen? Have I spoken to somebody for my God today? What do I have to do for my God today? I must do something for the house of my God today. When you make that your lifestyle, you will discover that you won't dry up. Amen? David, how can I be under this great house and the ark of God is under a tent? I'll build him a house. God said, in that it was in your heart to do it, thou doest well. It was God who stopped David. Can you imagine? So every day you are doing that, putting a little bit more effort for the things of God your givings, your commitments, talking to others, you take it seriously. And you'll be surprised. And you carry a servant's attitude, a servant's heart. Not they say you should be usher, you say it's an insult. Can you imagine? And you say, it's, and you, say you know God. They say be usher, be welcoming, or Apostle Mulat like that now, and it's, you know, it's very tall. You are not even that tall because the day you stood beside Sammy, Sammy is taller than you. They start saying, okay, Mulat, your job. God is helping us with a lot more people. We need you in the car park to control. And then she goes to his wife and says, can you see what Pastor did to me today? He turned me to a car park man. No, he hold me. You should enjoy and dance at your car park in church. You understand me? People lack understanding. David said, I would rather be a doorkeeper. You remember? In his house, that's Osha. His kingo. <laughs> One day in Kenya land, my son and Richard were just walking around the compound, and uh, a lady came to greet him. That lady is among the sanctuary keepers, those who clean the toilets, clean everywhere, and you see them enjoying it. And the bishop said, uh, Don't you know that woman? He said, I said, no. he said I, I dedicated her second ship, not boat, oh, ship. <laughs> last week. <laughs> Sheep. She's just enjoying herself. Cleaning all your debts. But when it's in the house of God, ah, it's a privilege. Another day. And in fact, it was that day too. He now pointed to another man in the sanctuary. He said, you don't know that man? I said, no, he's a Supreme Court judge. 
carrying broom. And you know, in America, I even make like this for you with all the tools you used to clean. You know the ones we used to clean at all? <laughs> Just enjoying their lives. Amen. Because it is for the house of your God. In his house, you are a servant. We are all servants. We carry that attitude to please him. <laughs> Passionately to please him. And we are sure that you don't dry out. That's wisdom. Trade your resources and your energy here so that you don't suffer there. That's wisdom. Amen? Glory to God. I pray that in whatever situation you find yourself, you will not lack his wisdom. Wherever it looks as if you have been stranded, there's a way out for you today. Whatever has been made to be impossible to you, by the wisdom of God that we have heard of today, at your return to it, it will be a cheap possibility for you. The right words. Amen? We we'll always find a way out of your mouth. You know, Jesus said, I will give you a mouth and a wisdom. Amen? Nothing will be able to entrap you anymore. Jesus is Lord. Rise up on your feet. Give God thanks. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank him for his word. Amen? Thank him for his word tonight. And your heart must be craving before him tonight. Lord, this is the situation of my life. Sort me out. Show me the right way to go about it. Amen? Make a way for me. I know you are the way. There is always the right way in you. Stand you in the ways and see and ask for the old path where it is the good way. When you walk in it, you shall find rest unto your souls. Lord, I need a solution. I'm, not, I'm sure all of us here, the multitude of us here tonight, we have various issues, burning issues of our lives. Why not go before him right now and say, Lord, make a way for me. Show me the right step to take. Lead me the right way to go. Make a way for me, Lord. Let your wisdom answer for me. I'm your servant. Let your wisdom answer for me. For I know not how to go, where to go, what to do. But there's a solution in you, Lord of heaven. Let your wisdom answer for me. In the name of Jesus. I say in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. For the refreshing of your word. And I pray that the word that you have delivered to us tonight, he said, once you have spoken twice, have we heard that power belong to God. Let the Holy Spirit multiply it in everyone's heart here tonight. And I'm asking King of Glory, I know. The multitude here need the way out. Various situations of our lives. Therefore, Father, by your word and by your spirit, Lighten your word in every heart here. Showing us the right way, the better way, the higher way to go in the affairs of our lives. And as we pick your word, read it. Open up our understanding. He said, we guide our feet in the way of peace. Guide our feet in your word, O oh God. And shine the light, the right way to go for everyone. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name. I say in Jesus' mighty name.